Seth Meyers was talking about how nice it had been to not think or care about Donald Trump lately. He said, it's like when you finally get a cast removed and you get to shower without taping a plastic bag to your arm. But then Trump sued his niece, Mary Trump. Seth said, imagine suing your own niece. I mean, fortunately, his lawyer has experienced suing family members since Rudy sued his cousin for divorce. Ouch. Kimmel. His lawsuit claims Mary Trump was motivated by a, quote, personal vendetta and the desire to gain fame, notoriety, acclaim, and a financial windfall, unquote, which are the same reasons Trump ran for president, Kimmel. The real victim is the guy who lost a billion dollars while pretending to be a self-made tycoon in Pizza Hut commercials. Seth, Trump has so many legal problems. CNN doesn't even have time to go through them all. CNN, they're a 24-hour news network. All they do is the news. It's not like they hand it off at 4 p.m. to their baking show, The Need, with Jake Tapper, or their 5 p.m. dating show, On the Prowl, with The Wolf. That's great. Seth, kind of feels like we were in The Purge, and Donald Trump is the only one who's allowed to break laws. Like, he can just walk around and do whatever he wants. At this point, Trump could park his car in front of a fire hydrant instead of towing him. They just let the building burn down. Bill Burr was on Seth Meyers. Bill was talking about his recent comedy album signing, you know, at Amoeba Records on vinyl. Grammy suspicion. Let's not tangent today, Johnny Mac. Originally, the plan was that you would have to wear a mask to meet Bill Burr. And then eh, Bill said, I'll be wearing a mask, but I'm at the point now. I don't care anymore. I don't care if you think the world's flat. I don't care what you think. Just do whatever the hell you're going to do. Bill Burr continued saying, and these are the words of Bill Burr, I hope the virus gets deadlier, and I just want to wipe out way more people. That's what I'm going for, because I think if we all try to pull in the same direction, it's not going to happen. We're sort of all broken up into these pods on the internet where people just want to hear what they want to hear. So, I mean, go ahead, you know, go take alligator plaque medicine or whatever the hell you're into. I don't care. Maybe it works. I don't know. I don't care. People are blaming red ties and blue ties for this whole thing. You should blame God and modern medicine because God made people flawed and modern medicine kept them alive. Defeated Mother Nature. That's why there's 8 billion mouth-breathing morons on the planet, myself included. There's a plague of people like me. So I think it's great that people are going to go old school and not listen to doctors and, you know, go back to doing dances or whatever the hell they're going to do. Did you hear about the Super Mario movie? Maybe it's just a Mario movie. Whatever it is. You know, Nintendo, Mario, the plumber guy. You're familiar with this. You live in America. You've heard of this. Chris Pratt will take on the role of the iconic mustached plumber himself with Charlie Day as his brother slash sidekick slash unpaid intern Luigi, says Vulture. Let's stop off there. People are wigged. Chris Pratt apparently is of Norwegian descent. He is not Italian. Charlie Day apparently is of Italian descent. But wait, canonically, the character of Mario is Japanese. That's what Nintendo says. I know that makes no sense. Princess Peach will be played by Anya Taylor-Joy and Jack Black as Bowser. That's pretty good. Running out the cast are Mac Packer, Keegan-Michael Key as Toad. Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek, a Nintendo character I'm not familiar with, and Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike. You're probably wondering, who's going to play Donkey Kong? Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. Cranky Kong? Fred Armisen. Sure, why not? So you know how, like, usually on Monday, I tell you I listen to Tim Dillon's podcast, and I tell you eventually Tim Dillon's going to step on a landmine, and I'm going to deny that I ever told you Tim Dillon's podcast that comes out on Sunday is really, really funny, and you should listen to it. You know how I tell you I'm going to deny that someday? From KHAK, they write, Back on September 13th, the Englert Theater in Iowa City announced an upcoming show from comedian Tim Dillon. Tim's tour, A Real Hero, is set to take place at the historic venue on Thursday, November 14th. Okay. The venue's website reads, Tim Dillon is a stand-up comedian, writer, and actor. He was a new face at the Montreal Comedy Festival in 2016. He won the title of New York's Funniest 2016 at Caroline's. In 2017, he was named one of the top 10 comics you need to know by Rolling Stone magazine. He's had two specials premiere in 2018, a Comedy Central Half Hour and a Netflix Quarter Hour. Sounds pretty funny. I have told you I like the podcast, even though someday I will deny saying that. Just a few days after announcing the November comedy show, the Englert Theater posted an update on Facebook regarding the performance. Listen to this. The venue apparently received some backlash for booking the famous comedian. The post doesn't cite any specific comments from disappointed patrons, but it does say, in retrospect, with more intensive vetting, that's on us, we would have likely passed on this show in this current moment. We want to host artists who sometimes line and other times challenge commonly had views in our community. That diversity of expression is important to who we are. However, in this case, given the artist's recent comments, which cast increasing doubt on our nationwide vaccination effort in the midst of a pandemic, this show lands as a tone-deaf presentation 
And we are sorry for that. I can't wait to hear how Tim reacts to that. It's a comedy show. He's doing kind of a character if you listen to the podcast, everybody. Despite the complaints from community members, it does not appear that the show has been canceled. In fact, the ticketing website reports that all the tickets in Zone 1 have been sold. And so have a lot of the tickets in Zone 2. From NR Today, they write, and this is the only place I have sourced this, according to NR Today, Carlos Mencia may be a nationally recognized comedian with a host of movies, TV shows, and albums to his credit. Um, Yeah, he's nationally recognized. Does he have a host of movies? I'll push back on that. TV shows with an S. He had one that I can think of. And albums to his credit. I guess he has a few. But I digress. That's not the point of the article. They say, Carlos Mencia may be a nationally recognized comedian, blah, 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 but the money he owes the IRS, uh uh-oh, and the three Roseburg properties he stands to lose over those debts is no laughing matter. So I guess I shouldn't be reading this in my semi-sarcastic tone that I read articles in. I should drop to serious voice, which sounds like this. Mencia and his wife Amy own nearly $1.2 million for three years of unpaid federal income taxes. According to a lien filed by the IRS in Douglas County in July, documents show the couple owe $433,890 for unpaid taxes in 2013, three-something for 2014, and three-something for 2015. They didn't actually write three-something. I just don't feel like reading the numbers. Again, according to NR Today, the IRS has placed liens on properties the couple owns in Roseburg to try and recoup the money. Julia Louis-Dreyfus has joined Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy in a new Netflix comedy movie. Plot details are being kept under wraps. Why? But it's said, it's said, people hear that it might be possibly about an incisive examination of modern love and family dynamics and how culture, societal expectations, and generational differences can shape and affect relationships. You can see why Netflix wouldn't want to, like, let that out. That almost blows the whole movie. Eddie and Jonah's characters will find themselves on opposite sides of those divides, while Julia Louis-Dreyfus has been cast as Jonah Hill's mother in the film. From Variety, Jenny Slate and Charlie Day, ding, second Charlie Day mention of the podcast. Who had that in the pool? You didn't. They're going to play a couple of scheming execs in I Want You Back. It's a new romantic comedy starring Jenny Slate and Charlie Day. Charlie Day's main credit listed as... It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's his main credit. He was also in, uh, what was the Kaiju movie? Pacific Rim. He's in that. Can't mention that. I'm silly today. This thing, it's called I Want You Back. It's on Prime Video, February 11th, just in time for Valentine's Day. So when the girlfriend's like, what should we do for Valentine's Day? You go, I want to watch a Jenny Slate and Charlie Day movie, and then she'll be really ticked off at you for three days. Jenny Slate and Charlie Day play Emma and Peter in the new film. They are two souls who thought they were on the precipice of life's biggest moments. You know, marriage, kids, houses in the suburbs. Houses, not just one house. It says houses in the suburbs. Is that the American dream now? Two homes in the suburbs? I digress once again. They thought they were on the precipice of life's biggest moments until their respective partners dumped them. Oh, I see. Charlie had a house. Jenny Slate had a house. Houses. Now it makes sense. Now they're in their 30s. And they're terrified they've missed their shot at being happy ever after. Emma and Peter are further horrified to learn that their partners have moved on with no prospects on the horizon and the threat of dying alone hanging over their heads. They hatch a desperate plan to put an end to their ex's new relationships and win them back. Let's see. This comes out on Valentine's Day. Do we think that at the end of the film, Emma and Peter realize they love each other? Or do you think they'll just go back to their exes? We'll find out. Today's Daily Comedy News. Are you listening to me? Today's Daily Comedy News is brought to you by Scott Beckett. His name is Scott Beckett, and he sponsors today's Daily Comedy News. Here's what happened. You know how I, at the end of the podcast, or sometimes in the middle, I'm like, hey, everybody, buy me a coffee, buy me a coffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. Give me a five bucks a tip chart. You've heard me do this. Scott Beckett was kind enough to do this. He went to buy me a coffee.com slash Daily Comedy News and bought me a coffee. So what do I do? I get on the podcast and I say, thanks, Nikki. (laughs) Scott shot me a note that said, thanks for the shout out on Thursday's show for buy me a coffee. That said, you mispronounced my name. Instead of the traditional pronunciation Scott that many people use, you pronounced it Nikki. (laughs) Good chop busting there. I felt terrible. I like really felt bad. Scott and I were emailing on the side since then. We're cool. 
Uh, but I explained, here's what happened. His original note said, hey, thanks for your work on this each day. How many times have you had to say testicles or some derivative in the last week? Thanks, Nikki. And I took that to mean Nikki was the person who wrote the email, but actually he was thanking Nikki Minaj for making uh, comments about her cousin's testicles, COVID something, something, Jimmy Kimmel last week. Go back and listen to the podcast. I don't even remember what the joke was. So Scott Beckett sponsors today's Daily Comedy News. Thank you, Scott Beckett. And this got me thinking. Is this not the plot for an Adam Sandler movie? Now think about it. There's a character, Scott. We'll have Scott played by Adam Sandler. In the movie, Scott, played by Adam Sandler, he's a podcast fan who just wants to be friends with his favorite podcast host, so he starts buying him coffee. Now who should play the podcast host? I think we have to go to Instagram at Daily Comedy News and crowdsource this. Great opportunity for you guys to bust my chops. Who would play Johnny Mac in the Adam Sandler movie, Buy Me a Coffee? Think about it. All right. So Scott, played by Adam Sandler, is a podcast fan. He just wants to be friends with his favorite podcast host, played by TBD. But the host thinks the emails are coming from Nikki. And the host imagines Nikki kind of looking like Olivia Munn, you know? Maybe Olivia Munn's younger sister. So over the course of time... As one does, the host leaves his wife for the Olivia Munn-looking woman. It's been known to happen. Sometimes the timeline is a little wacky. You know, honey, I was recording in the basement, and then, I don't know, suddenly seven months later we had a baby. I don't know. Timelines get wacky. Anyway, Adam Sandler, buy me a coffee. Who should play me? Go to Instagram, at Daily Comedy News. Thank you, Scott Beckett. Got the name right. It's time for Gossip Corner, which seems to be the new thing I do after the commercial break. From TMZ, Chelsea Handler and Joe Coy, they're not trying to hide their relationship anymore. And Joe Coy is already playing the good boyfriend role, hyping her comedian chops at his own expense. TMZ ran into Chelsea Handler and Joe Coy at LAX, you know, as TMZ tends to deal with celebrities. Oh, you guys happen to be here? Us too. That's weird. TMZ says Chelsea and Joe were holding hands as they strolled. So they asked Joe Coy a question. They probably yelled out, Hey, Joe Coy, how do you and Chelsea Handler? Which one is funnier? Why do I sound like angry Jerry Seinfeld? Joe Coy answered, Who's funnier out of Joe Coy and Chelsea Handler? Joe Coy's answer? Chelsea Handler. Of course. What's he going to say? Me? Then they have a fight on the plane? You don't want to do any of that. All right, I'm running long here. I could do Norm, Todd Barry, or Jim Gaffigan and save the rest for later in the week. I'm doing a lot of Norm. Let's take a Norm break today. One day off from Norm, that leaves Todd Barry and Jim Gaffigan. Let's do Todd Barry. How about that? Todd Barry is fascinated by what are called secondary markets when you tour. Now, the big markets are New York, LA, Chicago. You've heard of these places. Secondary markets are places like Hattiesburg. He even wrote a book in 2017 called Thank You for Coming to Hattiesburg, one comedian's tour of not quite the biggest cities in the world. Todd said, I like going to cities that don't necessarily get every band slash comedian that's on tour. The people are excited that you made the effort. Also, I like checking out places I might not go to otherwise. He occasionally opens up for bands, which can be a nightmare for comedians if the energy's not right. So he's careful about choosing which bands he opens up for. Such bands include Yola Tango, who matches low-key energy. Todd said, I usually work with bands who have a chill, well-behaved crowd, so it usually works out, but there's no way he said it at that energy level, right? I don't do a Todd Barry, but he probably said something like, I usually work with bands who have a chill, well-behaved crowd, and I'm not completely unknown, so that helps. Did you know, in the mid-80s, Todd Barry played drums in the South Florida jangly post-punk band The Chant. He still plays drums. He even gets to join some better well-known bands on stage. Once, he joined Super Chunk on stage to play a cover of the Misfits song Horror Business. Earlier this year, Todd Barry tweeted a video of his Super Chunk performance at the Foo Fighters, asking if he could sit in on a future show, saying that his performance was flawless and in the pocket. Todd says, Dave Grohl has not responded to me. But that 11-year-old girl who challenged him to a drum-off is amazing. Light years better than me. That is your comedy news for today. If you want to be cool like Scott Beckett, I might even get your name right. Scott Beckett went to buymeacoffee.com slash news, and you know what he did. Now they're making an Adam Sandler movie about it. Follow this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. See you tomorrow.